Remember the furor in California back in 2018 when the state ruled that coffee had to have a warning label declaring that this product is known to the state of California to cause cancer. That was according to Proposition 65, a law that had been adopted back in 1986 requiring a warning label on any product that contains reproductive toxins or chemicals known to cause cancer. In 2018, the state, in its wisdom, decided that acrylamide, produced when coffee beans are roasted, fell into that category, and therefore coffee would require a warning label, and coffee shops would have to post signs warning about the carcinogenicity of their product. This was despite the International Agency for Research on Cancer in 2016 having reversed its original 1991 classification of coffee as possibly carcinogenic to humans after reviewing more than a thousand studies in humans and animals. Obviously, coffee producers and coffee shops were up in arms over the Prop 65 ruling and its non-compliance fines up to $2,500 a day. The National Coffee Association and Starbucks led the fight against enforcement of the law and were victorious in 2019 when the state capitulated and admitted that the acrylamide dose in coffee was too small to be a carcinogenic risk. Any food that contains starch and proteins can form acrylamide when heated. Starch can break down to release glucose, and proteins decompose to release amino acids. These can then engage in what is known as the Maillard reaction, named after French chemist Louis Camille Maillard. In 1912, Maillard described the reaction between simple sugars and amino acids, and showed that they produce a host of compounds that give brown foods their distinctive flavor. However, there's an issue with one of the amino acids, asparagine, given that it reacts with glucose to form acrylamide. While IARC does not classify coffee as a carcinogen, it does classify acrylamide as a probable human carcinogen. This is based on feeding large doses to animals and making an educated guess about the effect of smaller doses on humans. Different agencies make different guesses about the maximum dose an adult can safely ingest every day. Some claim it to be as low as 25 micrograms acrylamide a day. Others say that up to 195 micrograms is fine. Obviously, humans cannot be fed different amounts of acrylamide and then be monitored for decades to determine the incidence of cancer. The closest one can come are studies that follow the health status of groups of people who periodically fill out food frequency questionnaires from which acrylamide intake can be estimated. The majority of such studies have found no association with cancer. Nevertheless, it is prudent to try to minimize exposure to any substance that causes cancer in animals. So let's take a look at the acrylamide content of specific foods and compare it to the guesses for maximum recommended daily intake. When calculations are made, taking all foods into account, an adult consumes about 30 micrograms a day, well below the average of the guesses for maximum safe amounts. Potato chips and french fries are at the high end with a serving containing about 50 micrograms. A serving of cereal has about 7 micrograms and a cup of coffee less than three. Clearly, it never made any sense to include coffee in Proposition 65, especially given that coffee has known health benefits, including improvement in cognition. Maybe the officials at California's Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment, who regulate Proposition 65, should start drinking coffee to improve their cognition so that they can reassess some of the other dubious features of that law, such as the sign at the entrance of a Disneyland resort warning people that the resort contains chemicals known to the state of California to cause cancer. That Prop 65 sign should have a warning of its own, and it should say, unfounded warnings increase stress that increase the risk of disease. That for today is our Cup of Joe.